Hi everyone, thanks for joining our session. My name is Moin, I'm one of the traders out here, just like you guys. Okay, so we have the sessions every Thursday night to try to answer some of your questions, for me personally to learn from you guys as well. Okay, so that's that. Before we start, the usual disclaimer, anything that I mention over here or is mentioned on the server is not a financial advice. We are not qualified to give you that. Okay, it's more from the perspective of learning. And that's our whole objective, to make you guys better traders, to make us into better traders. All right. And as you know, like these sessions are very open. As long as you don't have any background noise, keep your mics open. I don't mind at all. And feel free to ask questions. There are absolutely, absolutely no dumb questions, no basic questions. Whatever comes to your mind, feel free to ask. So who wants to go first? Any hey, questions you guys want to go over? Feel free to let me know that. I'm here. Hey, more. Mm -hmm. Tell can, me. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Hey, great. When we're, when we're doing um, uh, futures, when we're doing futures and we're trying to find out the, uh, we're looking for to start our day and the numbers, how do we, how do we look, uh, for the trends or the numbers that to in order for it to go up or go down in whichever direction we're looking for. Okay, nice question. So typical, let's open a NQ chart or a ES chart. What do you trade? NQ, ES, which one? Or commodities? What do you trade? Started, I'm not NQ. With NQ. All right. So we have the chart open. See, trading futures is comparatively easier, I would say, than trading. And penny stocks, because penny stocks pump and dump. There are pumps and dumps in SPY and QQQ as well. Okay, NQ is basically QQQ futures, those who don't know. Okay, and I don't do options. I do penny stocks and futures, nothing in between. Because like, the moment I discovered futures, doing options was like the, uh, I mean like, was a no-brainer for me. So, NQ is basically the same chart as QQQ during the daytime. The reason I do futures is like there is no premium barn over here. I'm not a very smart guy like a lot of you guys out there. Don't understand the Greeks very well. Don't want to bother with it as well. This is just like buying and selling a stock, number one. And number two, I don't have to trade with my own money. Okay, so I'm a founded trader for almost a year now. So typically I trade based on those companies. And you guys can get started with them with as low as like 50 bucks. Right now, there's promotions going on. 20 bucks is good enough to get started. Anyway, coming back. When you trade NQ or anything, okay, any single thing that you plan to trade, the first thing that you need to do is plan out your levels, right? You need to see right. like, what are the good support and resistance levels. You need right. to see like what was the high and low of the previous day. What are the okay. highs and lows of the previous week? Okay. Okay. So those are there. Next, what you need to determine is which time frame you are going to execute your trades. Okay. okay. So, for me, I'm a funded trader. Okay, so I cannot hold my trades overnight. I have to close within the day. And my trading style is pure scalping. Most of my trades even don't last a minute. At max, few minutes. Okay. So, that's my trading style. So, for me, I draw my support and resistances from the 30-minute chart. Because that is like yeah. the time frame for me. I trade on a one minute chart and I draw those on a 30 minute chart. So that's what I trade on. If you are basically trading on a five minute chart, you should be looking at like the 30 minutes and the hour for you. So that basically will give you an idea where the levels are. So let's make this chart a bit bigger. Yep. So if we are, sorry, let's make the one minute chart a little bit bigger. So I'm trading NQ on a one minute chart, right? I told you guys. But look here, what I have is basically at the end of today, futures open from 6 p.m. in the evening all the way to 5 p.m. the next day. That's a full session for futures. That's another beauty right. of trading futures. It trades 23 hours. So if you guys have a full-time day job like me, trading futures can be very rewarding. So looking here, what do I do? Once the day ends at 5 p.m., I spend five minutes basically to put out my levels. So what do I do? I pick the high and low of the previous day that's marked on my charts mm -hmm. already. 
this is the mm -hmm. high and low of the previous day which are marked in like the white lines over here then what do I do this 30 minute lines are the orange support and resistances these I have from pretty long time okay if you look at my actual chart my chart looks like this okay lots of orange lines which are there oh, damn. from the last year or so okay so these lines what I do is look at it look what's relevant for today maybe I just did a little bit here and there okay now the beauty of it is tomorrow when I'm going into trading I know very well right what do I want to see for a short I want to see like this getting rejected round here for a long I want to see like a break of this level before taking a decision on this right a break of the top level, a break of the, the, the bottom line, or a break of the top line. Mm -hmm. No, a break of the bottom line. Nope. Basically, I will first look into shorting this somewhere around here because this was a, right. this is right. a resistance for me right now. If this, right. uh, if I have like a breakout of this level, I'll think about longs. Okay. Moreover, if I have a breakout starting over 200 EMA, I'll start thinking about long over here. Before that, I won't think about anything going long over here. Okay. Because it's a support line. I have my support line, which basically is coming from the daily. Okay, which is here, the white line. I don't have anything in between. So basically, these lines are there. Okay, so typically futures is much more easier to trade than the penny stocks. Like on the penny stocks, these are pure pump and dumps. Okay, these are pump and dumps, front loading. Okay, and all these things. I play by the market. Okay, I make good money with it. I'm happy over here basically it's much more technical so you see your lines you see your EMAs understand the trend get into the trade get out of the trade that's it keep it simple and you guys may have seen my trading strategies are super simple okay I love keeping it that way so does that answer your question created for greatness well I understand trying support and resistance but you said that using the 30 minute to and then before the day before, mm -hmm. using when I draw my my support and resistance lines, I'm using the day before and the, and the the day of that I'm trading. Mm -hmm. Highs are the highs and lows of the day of the previous day, and then basically my support and resistance are from the thirty minute chart because I am scalping on a one minute chart. Okay, so the thirty right. minute stays pretty strong from me. So what you can see is like my charts are always side by side, right? The right side never changes. It's always on a one minute. The left side, my typical reference frame is five minutes when I'm trading. Okay, but typically you will see like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour is bookmarked. Because what I learned from, James is here as well. He's one of the other alpha traders and he taught me a lot. So what I learned, okay, from him, and this was extremely helpful, that I flip between the time frames. And try to see right. exactly what's the bigger trend playing out. Okay. Right. So, so that really helps. You just look at the trend, try to understand the trend, and play along with the trend. That's it. It's not a rocket science. Okay. Um, it sounds super easy, but trust me, when you go to execute, okay, we regularly make mistakes. All of us does. Oh, yeah. I already, I, oh, yeah. I already know. I've, I've been doing it for the last couple of days or so, and it's, it's, I've been up and down with it on the, on the, uh, the eval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been up and down, up and down with it. So I'm just trying to That's part of get, the become, think of it that way. Yeah. Yeah. And be trying to become better. Okay. Um, if you ask me, better I've been trading futures roughly from February or March of last year. I think I was the first one of the whole bunch who started with this. Probably my journey on futures, if I compare it with penny stocks, okay, the way I'm profitable with penny stocks and that, probably maybe 20% of that, I'll say. Okay, penny stocks is still my bread and butter. I make money out of that. And if you ask me about my experience on futures, I would say probably I have just scratched the top, probably like 10% experience. That's it. Okay, so it's not like you learn things in a day. You have to put in like your hours, pay your dues, then you get it. You go to college, you do it for four years, right? Nobody complains. And here we want to trade for like five days and we want to start making money. Yeah, anyway, yeah. even after I've been doing the, the paper trading for about, you know, maybe three or four months, just paper trading. And, and even when I started with the prop firm, it's still, mm 
mm-hmm. get well perpetrated, but then it starts with the proper firm, and it's like everything's different. Yeah. I mean, go with the proper <laughs> firm because there's whole psychology is <laughs> different because you know now it's not paper trading anymore. It's real money that you're playing with, right? And I don't want to blow up the account, right? Exactly. <laughs> okay, even though if you spent, probably if you took the, in the cell, you spend either like, what, 20 bucks or 35 bucks probably to get the account, but still real money. You don't want to blow it up. Your mindset is completely different now. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's the so. thing. Go with it. It should be good. And we are here to help always. Anything you need, just let always. us know. All right. Yeah, you guys have been great. Thank you. You're welcome. Trader Level Zero, you said you had a question for me. Shoot. Uh, my question is, what's the first thing you look at when you are going to trade uh, a penny stock? I don't know if you guys noticed this, right? Like, I usually don't post at all during the day or something. But today, this was like so attractive, okay? And I don't usually trade during the day also. But this thing was like so attractive. I posted the chart in the general room earlier okay so when i look at anything okay to consider am i gonna trade this or not the first thing that i look is i change the chart to a daily time frame and look like what's happening on this chart it's like kind of difficult to see so here basically you can see this thing was like three cents not even like 10 days back right so from there it ran to two dollars and 30 cents Okay, that's like, I don't know how many thousand percent returns on this. Now, this thing was intentionally put down, put down, put down. Okay, and then the pump started. The pump actually started right from here. Okay, earlier this week. It took up the leverage of the AMC, GMC, GME run. Okay, and probably tomorrow we are going to see the final leg. So, when I look at this, okay... What are the things that comes to my mind? Anyone wants to volunteer? Why this chart seems super attractive to play? Take a dig at it. Markets are closed. You guys are not going to lose money trying to answer. And if you give a wrong answer, it's perfectly fine. I give wrong answers all the time. Anyone? Is is it because of that uh, wick at the top? coming down that happened today only right when i posted this around 10 a.m in the morning probably nothing happened that time it was still like around 110 112 any other idea Th- but thanks for at least starting this off can i have an answer for i guess um uh, it's coming down from a lot higher mm-hmm. to begin with mm-hmm. okay you're getting there. I like the answer. But this is very normal coming down from very high up because this is a stock split. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty normal. But you have a very valid point. We are going to touch on that. Next. Who wants to go next? Anyone? I'm oh, sorry. What was the question? I missed it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I could hear you. What was the question you were asking? Why does this chart look so attractive? Scaff said RSI. RSI, what happened with RSI? I didn't get it, Decaf. Can you explain? Your RSI is extremely high on the daily chart. Already, like two days back, your RSI crossed the oversold level, and still this is going up, right? Tomorrow, probably, I'm really hoping this goes up a bit more. Um, the white line is that your 200 EMA up on top? Nope, that's I guess it's like 60 EMA. Your 200 EMA is this is like so diluted, okay, and so beaten down stock. Your 200 EMA on the daily chart is $28.25. It doesn't even show on the chart. Mm, mm-hmm. Okay, it's right there. Don't think it's going to go up to there. Okay. What else? 
Anyone else? Come on, take a dig at it. The buying pressure is um, uh, looks like it's starting to increase as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let me break a few myths over here, right? We often hear about short squeeze, high cost to borrow. These are things you can just check in a second. Okay, this thing is not running because you have a short squeeze on this thing. Okay, this thing is not running because the cost of cost to borrow is extremely high. We're gonna break down the AMC GME trades today. Okay, this thing is only running because of one reason. Your chart has lots of room left to run. If you look at it, if I'm looking at it from a daily perspective, okay, we closed up here yesterday around 90 cents. My super dump theory about going long and if anything is around 90 cents, just take it. It will go, it's gonna hit a dollar. That's probably the most brainless strategy you guys ever heard, but that works for me most of the time. When something is around 90 cents, just take it, wait for the dollar, move. Yo, 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 how are we doing guys? Hey Alpha, what's up? Cool, man. Good, man. Go, go, go. Just to say, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave in a minute. I'm going to stop by for a minute and tell you guys uh, congratulations for anybody that makes some good money today, man. The market's been hot. So, you know, stay on top of things up. Don't, uh, uh, like always say, I don't have a leverage. And again, listen to what Emma's going to say because, uh, you know, he knows what he's doing. He's obviously trying to short my penny stocks, but we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I do long as well, Alpha. I'm just talking about my super dumb strategy to go long and make money. Okay. All right. So my very first trade on this, okay, is right here at open. It's at 90 cents. It's like a super dumb strategy. Take like whatever quantity you feel comfortable with. I don't trade on a single stock, on a single Order trade with filled. more than 5% for me. Okay. So over here, that's like 5,000 stocks. You go in here around 90 cents when this is coming here because you saw like 90 cents was trying to break for in the pre-market, right? It never happened. So when you are seeing these candles, slap it. Okay, take the 10 cents. That's like 500 bucks on 500, on 5K. Okay, so it's not bad money, right? I would take it any single day. Okay, and it's literally a, literally a brainless trade. You don't need your EMS, anything. All you need to look is like, is the trend going up? If the trend is going up, just take it. Okay, that's there. Now, when I posted the chart, it was around here. Okay, let's move to a one minute chart. When I posted, this was basically consolidating around here. It made a break, tried to make a break. It didn't happen. Okay, it was consolidating. I had my level set over here, right here. You can see 133. And I don't remember who asked, but somebody asked, do you think it's gonna go to 133? Trust me, guys, I'm exactly like all of you, okay? I don't have a crystal ball. Alpha doesn't have a crystal ball. James doesn't have a crystal ball. None of us have a crystal ball over here. All we do is we look at the chart. So we are waiting for what? To see if this thing actually breaks, okay? How do I confirm my breaks? And this is a question somebody asked me. Okay, that how do you play the support and resistance and play according to that? So I have my level. The first candle goes up. I'm not in the trade yet. Okay, because I don't know whether this is a fake breakout or not. The next one closes slightly below. But look at my EMA. My EMAs are completely uptrending right now. I'm closing above my 9 EMA. I'm closing way above my 20 EMA. My nine is the green, Order Order filled. Filled. my blue is the 20, white is 60, and the yellow is 200. Okay, so I'm closing completely above, even when it's closing below. The next one, when it's going up, this is your confirmation candle, literally. It's telling you, okay, that this level is being held up when it's closing here. So what you can do is, you can slap a portion over here, or basically you can wait for it to come down to your 9 EMA, come down to the level. Whatever you do, it really doesn't matter at that time, but you need to take a quick I decision. I thought searching for Nothing, 
okay so you basically need to take a quick decision this candle is for some people to still being faked out okay but there's no worries with that because look at your five minutes your five minutes is completely uptrending at that time if we look here look at your five minute right you're way above your 9 EMA on the five minute right here okay so this is clearly telling you that get into the trade stay in the trade don't just sell because it's here some people they will put a very tight stop loss here just below here this is to fake them out take the trade from them some people will put it below their 9 EMA this is basically to take your stocks and sell it to you again at a higher price okay so that is basically the trade I took right from here okay I jumped in right around here 1.4 ish okay and I'm holding where is my stop my stop is below my 20 EMA way below somewhere around here 125 I'm risking 15 cents what's my target literally this has room to run all the way because remember we looked at the daily chart just a while ago the daily chart has a lot of room to run away because there is no support or resistance once you back 133 to all the way up to here there is no definite support or resistance nothing okay so if this runs this runs really hard that's the trade you take so what did I do why did I start scaling I'm just holding it out okay it's moving up moving up I'm watching because nowhere I'm even closing close to my 9 EMA where I started getting off is basically just below two dollars that is where I set my first 50 percent off right here okay so it took me out next I'm waiting again okay and how far do I know it will go I literally don't know how far this is gonna go my next scale of 25% is at 225 and what am I doing in between I'm actually pushing my stops to the close of the last candle so whatever happens in this trade I will remain profitable over here where did I get out when the halt happened it started coming down when it unhalted I immediately sold okay I think I got around two dollars I'm way more than happy with this trade I'm done then basically my other trade started okay when they started coming down I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the concept of selling naked calls which is literally like you are selling you don't have the call contracts okay on options you don't have the option contracts you don't own the contracts but you are literally pulling the contracts out of thin air okay and you are selling it to people so what I did is when it was around here I sold one and a half dollar strike price contracts for like 80 cents okay right when I got out after the unhold I sold that at 80 cents okay so that's there I don't even have those contracts to sell so you can say literally this is like shorting in another form so selling it right over here at 80 cents what do I do then and the expiry is tomorrow okay so if I sold it at 80 cents 1.5 dollar strike price as long as this thing doesn't hit two dollars thirty cent by tomorrow I'm good okay I'm profitable do I hold this tool tomorrow of course no if I see money I have to take money and I don't like keeping things overnight so when this thing started coming down I'm waiting seeing like what happened and when price starts dropping those contract prices also start like the call contracts start coming very cheap okay so I started like going into scaling out of my contracts okay I had like 10 I took out 5 at 50 cents waited even more this thing started coming down okay and I took out the other 5 when it was around here when it started testing this once the 60 AMA broke there is another halt you can see and the price dropped even more okay right around here so do I hold it tomorrow if I held it to tomorrow I would have probably to taken the whole 80 cents on each one which is $80 per contract on the entire thing but why do you want to risk your money right so when it came around here the contract prices were like 30 cents I bought those contracts covered it I'm out of the trade I'm done keep it simple okay you don't need to look into so many things is this thing done absolutely no this is getting ready for another pump right tomorrow okay and tomorrow most probably we'll see a break of this high if this holds up 
Now, do I jump in again? Probably no, not for longs anymore. Okay. Do I jump in for short? Absolutely. This looks way too lucrative. Why? Because if you check with your broker, you will see like there is still about, let me check with mine. There is about 1.2 million okay. shares available to short. Okay. And the cost to borrow is only 12 and a So, your big money, what they're going to do is, they started pumping this up again. People who thought they missed the trade, these are the people who started buying in. Okay, and they're being encouraged to buy. Probably tomorrow we'll see this break over $2, probably test this high, go a little bit higher. Okay, so tomorrow I'm going to rinse and repeat the same trade. If I see like at the time of market open, this is anywhere near 180 to 190, I'm going to go long, ride it up to $2. Then around two and a half, I'm going to start shorting this. Pretty much looking at like how it plays out. That's the plan. Okay. And keep it pretty simple. Now, if it really starts running, the thing is with this, why I covered all my shorts, okay, took out all my contracts out today. Because if this thing starts running, look till where is your next resistance. That's at $3. Okay. Before that, you literally don't have anything. So this has a huge room to run. That's the only th reason this thing basically ran today. Okay, and your market makers are always there to take the money from retail traders and to benefit from it. So their trade <laughs> started actually way earlier. Their trade started through all this period. Okay, they were just accumulating, driving down the price, accumulating the shares. The pump started from here. Okay, people started getting in. So today is basically your main day of the dub and the run over will be like tomorrow and after a few days you will see this coming back to exactly where it started from that's what penny stock says i love one thing alpha says one day probably if i'm like rich enough i'll make a painting of that who can put it on top of my desk that never marry a penny stock that's exactly the reason tell me any questions on this trade And the gentleman who asked, how do you determine what's the first thing you look at? Did I answer your question? Yes. Does it make sense for you? It makes a whole lot of sense. Thank you. And when you go into a trade, the thing is like you need to have a plan, okay, that your strategy should cover three things. Where to enter, okay, or, or why you are entering, where to exit, with profits and where to exit if the trade doesn't go your way. I mean, if you are to take a stop loss or take a hit. Do you guys want to see AMC? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Hey, I have a um a question. It's probably a basic question. Tell um, me. I haven't uh started trading futures, but I was considering it and just uh then let's thinking hold about getting on a, a platform and everything. Sure. Um, let's hold your question. Yeah, I hear a lot of folks there saying that you know they get a uh, a uh, uh, demo account, so accounts that they they're funded accounts. Mm -hmm. I don't. I want to understand like the uh, logic behind that. And I will take your question like at the end. Okay, we'll go over okay. futures as All well. Right, no worries. No okay, no yeah, no we'll go over then. Just hold on to your question for a while, yeah? Thank you. Okay, let's do AMC. If I ask you guys a question, can anyone give me a clear answer? Okay, this thing literally doesn't have any fundamental reason to run. Okay, absolutely no reason to run. This is probably the shittiest of stocks that you see. Okay, now... One guy wakes up one day in the morning, supposedly makes a post that we're going to do a short squeeze on it. And all the idiots out there, like me, start jumping in and start buying this. And why do we end up ultimately being like a bag holder, right? Because somebody definitely bought it here. And that somebody was not a market maker. Okay, the person who sold it, sorry, the institutions who sold it right around here, are the market makers 
and the people who bought it around this place or even if you go on a four hour chart it's even higher are people like us okay how do you guys know that based on the tweet that everyone started jumping in that guy is not part of the game of the market makers that he's not taking all of you he's the face of it and he's not being used to take all of us for a ride did anyone ever think of this from this perspective or am I having a few people having wheels in their brains turning around <coughs> Think about it. Amo said LOL they make you their liquidity. Absolutely. Okay. Where do the market makers get rich from? Where does the money come from? It's your money, my money. Okay. No I try money. not to give money too much these days. I try to take a bit of money. Okay. So it's our S money. Said they robbed your piggy bank. Absolutely. Okay. So we wake up we think like okay mc will do like 2021 again okay all of us are gonna get like millionaires overnight so we start trading what happens exactly what is supposed to happen give it a few more days this thing is gonna come down all the way down to exactly where it started this is where this is coming down okay so how do you trade this when this is going up very plain and simple we trade with the momentum that's it okay nothing else and if you're thinking this is a short squeeze easiest way to check go to your broker see how much quantity is available to short on this okay see how much is the cost to borrow on this that will tell you is this a real short squeeze or this is not a real short squeeze can i can i interrupt you there for Please, a minute go ahead uh, how how do that's that's the one thing that I understand. Uh, can you explain the uh, the short uh, the cost to borrow and all that? Uh, sure, I'll explain it for you guys. Okay, now think about it. AMC has been ripping money from the market ever since this whole thing started. Okay, they have kept on like selling the shares, more shares. Okay, they are like what right now? I think they have like. A billion shares or something available probably let me just check quickly what's their float so their float is 1.44 billion divided by five dollars yeah that's like a 500 million sorry 300 million shares okay they have outstanding probably just from the top of my head so short squeezes happen when there is a very tiny float okay like i think somebody asked this question in the morning like do i want to short lsti i said absolutely no okay even if i'm like shorting this with money that i made from the market i wouldn't even touch this because that's a sure loser for me lsti is a very small float stock it is extremely expensive to borrow okay when i checked in the morning it had like a hundred sixty eight percent cost to borrow okay right now it's 200 percent cost to borrow do i want to short it absolutely no okay it has a float which is roughly about 1.5 million shares this is something that will be squeezing like crazy that's a genuine squeeze on this basically what do we do we look at the chart as long as the trend is valid we play it to whichever side gonna be rich tomorrow penny stock is on the way five hundred dollars uh, uh if you guys don't mind okay can i meet you or well, you meet yourself so basically what do we do when this started day one for me i was watching s okay. said who said amc to 500 it will have s because said xd people like us are there okay and we want to believe it and we will keep on losing money believing these things okay so basically we started running up from here on Monday okay like we woke up we saw this guy posting and thinking like the short squeeze is back okay so this is going up whoever planned to short it around here is dead because you have to understand the momentum you have to let it run okay think of it like running a marathon 
what do you do you run first you at the beginning you run very first then you run out of breath you take a breather you run again after some time you cannot just keep on running nothing goes up in a straight line you start looking for signs of weakness so this is happening day two right around here this is happening okay if you want to short short this thing right around here when you see like these weeks are no longer holding up you cannot break these levels anymore you had a massive run in the pre-market on Monday then basically this is like telling you I'm gonna die and this that's exactly that happened okay you ran up to the level S said that's a double top that is Amo said face with tears of joy everyone gonna be shocked when Roaring Kitty opens a 200 million dollar family office well, you don't even know whether that guy is real or not, right? You guys even don't know whether he's a paid employee of a hedge fund or not. Okay, so basically when you saw this level coming up, till this, all the levels that you saw, it just got like butter. Over here, when it hit this level, how do you determine which level basically is holding up and not break anymore? When you see, start seeing these wicks, okay, that you're trying to break, coming down. Next, market opens just before that. This is the last play. Okay, the last part that they wanted to take the money out. Because we are thinking market will open. This will go to $50 today. Or $20 at the list. When you see this, that immediately on market open, this is fading out. That's the time you understand like this thing is going to die. Okay. And when you start taking a position, think of it from a psychological perspective. The moment it basically starts breaking $10, that is basically the indication that this is going to die. And exactly that has happened. You really tried to hold that $10 level, went up several times, tried to fight it, ultimately failed. And when this failed, it's a straight drop. Give it a week more, probably you're going to be back to $3. That's it. Keep things very simple. And if you want to get even more confirmed, if you want to short it, this is like the people who missed thought like oh I didn't take this trade let me take this trade the market makers are sitting right there okay to take your money they're saying yeah we are ready to sell you more okay because at no point of time I was watching AMC the whole time that the level to short came down below 500k shares okay there was so much shares left to short if I had literally that amount of money and I was a risk taker I would have loved to short this multiple times my shorts on it were pretty simple my shorts were it on from here, 750 yesterday, covered around five. That's it. And the day before, I actually shorted on K O double S and Blackberry. Because these names run together. There is no reason for them to run. Okay, so if something is going up without a reason, something will come down also without a reason. Very simple. I'm sorry if I broke a lot of dreams of you guys like this going to fifty dollars or five hundred and making a lot of money but that's the reality check you need <laughs> any questions on this trade <laughs> see again when it comes close to five dollars it doesn't even break and we are fading out again okay tomorrow probably we'll try to pick five dollars that would be another interesting thing to see probably it will make a good weekend for a lot of people Any questions on AMC, GME, how you play this, how to benefit from it? None at all? So, so I get it like is, you guys get it. Is GME um, di a different scenario than AMC? It's absolutely the other side of the coin. I'd love for you to walk us through that. Let's do one thing, yeah? Just give me a sec. Are these to the same chart or different charts? 
<laughs> Does it look exactly the same shirt? That's like following NQ with QQQ. Absolutely. It's two different styles, <laughs> right? Okay, yeah. this is AMC here. Sorry, this is Jamie yeah. over here. This is AMC over here. Okay, on my mm -hmm. left I have Jamie, on my right I have AMC. Both are on a one hour time frame. Does it look exactly the same shirt? Mm hmm So, these trades are being done by algorithms, okay, mainly. It's the same group of people who pumps this and who dumps this on us. Okay, so, exactly the same logics you applied for AMC, apply your same logics on GME. That's it. Okay, it's the same, exactly same algorithm which was used to play both of these charts. Make sense to you now? Yes. Okay. So I guess when is the right time to begin shorting GME? Let's do that. Or what? I don't mm -hmm. have this amount of money to play it. Okay, people who had a larger amount of money to lose, they played GME, I guess. People who had a lesser amount of money to lose, they played AMC. Mm -hmm. Okay, people who were wanting to make money but did not want to go into the this game, they played BlackBerry or Cost like me, okay, to make some quick money. So that's there. Now, let's look at GME chart. Amo said, what if my logic for AMC was to the move on, rolling on the floor laughing? Well, that As would be said kind LOL. of like gambling my friends and if you want to gamble again i'll quote alpha i love his quotes okay go to the casino <laughs> all right so yeah, let's look at this right. chart s said i'm dead fool amo said yes sir all right so when do you start thinking of like shorting something like this so first thing i do is if i have this chart with me I'll start drawing my levels. Okay, and this is moving up so fast. I'll start drawing up levels from Keeble 7467 said is the last pattern a cup and handle on GMA. Depends which time frame you're looking at. Okay. I'm not very good at patterns. I struggle. I remember only a few patterns like double top, double bottom. Okay. Cup and handle, probably a very few simple ones. <laughs> Oops, sorry, sorry, my bad. So we start from the weekly time frame because this thing is running really hard, right? Amo said, Stoop rolling on the floor laughing, bro. I see anything, I see a falling wedge. And one thing I learned very hard way whenever I go into a trade without my levels properly mapped out, I literally get slapped. Either I struggle to get out of that trade at break even or with minimal profit, but if I spend like a little bit of time trying to have my levels out properly and not that, okay, that really helps me. So from the weekly, I'm done. Next, what do I do? I move to a daily level and I try to see like what's happening. Are the weekly levels that I drew out, are they for good? Did I miss out anything? If I'm missing out anything, I'll draw it from the daily level. So my chart is all set up now. Next, I go back to my time frames where I trade, right? On the one minute and the five minute. So let's look at like this thing is going up. When did it start? I believe there was an earnings probably on this from where it started, no? Okay, earnings is upcoming, all right? So we basically started moving up from here. This $9 level is holding up pretty strong. Psychological mark. Chef, would you mind muting yourself? Unless you're planning to cook something for us. So basically this Asked, $9 level... said sound like a parrot. Hey, let's be respectful of everyone. 
so nine dollar level is holding up okay and the ten dollar sorry the ten dollar mark is holding up pretty strong okay that's a very strong sack level you start moving up the market makers are getting ready okay all this period this down period they have been accumulating the stock they have been taking the stock from the market they don't do it in one go at one time because then everyone will notice okay there will be a buying pressure they do it very very slowly so when this happened you're looking at it why this thing ran again very plain and simple you had your level at around the twenty dollar mark we were gradually approaching it the day basically first day we tested this didn't really work out but if you look at the smaller time frame again on Monday we had that post things are gonna look so good okay you start moving up from Monday in the pre-market everybody wakes up checks their Twitter okay and looks up starts going up right on Monday to where you start opening up with a gap right above this $20 mark okay that's your first psychological level people are thinking okay so we broke $20 finally just literally $20 we broke and we are never falling below 19 this is holding up you have lots of room to run look at the daily chart you have so much room on this thing to run again because from here if I'm looking at my next level is right around here I don't have anything in between so you're running up on Monday morning very strongly your small brother AMC is following you okay it's just like my two children whatever the older one does the smaller one tries to follow at times market opens we see this level is broken super happy okay what do you do day one you take it right up to here the next level if you want to short it here when this halted and started coming down below this $35 level that's the place where you could do it take it for the next level up to there what we had from before okay and this played exactly by the check textbooks okay level to level okay broke this you get in on this candle $5 trade literally if you are greedy you're gonna get smashed here because this thing is basically if you remember the same pattern as FFI what we saw today comes down then in the after hours start running for the next day okay exactly same pattern look here came down in the after hours started running next day morning we open up with another gap okay you break forty dollars this is your clear indication if I'm breaking forty where do I go 47 99 is the next level I had from the daily if I'm hitting that most likely I will hit 50 also okay so if you're looking over here and your trend is very very clear you're on a clear uptrend it's on a rip your 9 EMA is on the uptrend your 20 is on uptrend 60 is on uptrend 200 is on uptrend if you're planning to short this round here at these levels you'll be committing suicide same logic goes up to eighty dollars okay people are thinking if this is eighty this is gonna go to hundred based on that people started buying right around here okay and then it's game over okay you start seeing this wicks again exactly same logic as AMC starts coming down now it cannot break this level anymore why do you wanna short you look at the break of the next level a clean break of the next level which is right here at market open you start shorting you don't do bad and then you start scaling okay either you scale to the next level take it out or you scale at this to your EMAs okay take it out that's it again if you want to short it wait for the next day opened up again all the people who missed this trade this is FFIE day 2 okay what's gonna to happen tomorrow all the people who missed the trade here tomorrow goes up and then same story rinse and repeat that's it okay probably like in two weeks time this is gonna come back to around twelve dollars fifteen dollars let's see someone just remember to ask me this question in two weeks time we'll see where this goes
And at the end of the day, who's left holding the bags? People who bought here. People who bought here. Keeble 7467 said it has a gap to fill. Can I ask you a question? Keeble 7467 said, of course. Right here, right? Is there any signs that gaps get filled? Can anyone Keeble 7467 said, huh? Yeah. Keeble 7467 said, yup. What's the logic? Tell me. I'm, I would love to learn this. I've been searching for this question forever. That what's the science that gaps get filled? Can I talk? Of this course. easier. Please, go ahead. <clears throat> I'm not an expert, not a financial Nobody advisor is. or anything. This, Nobody this is. is just what I've been... Mm -hmm. Just what I've been told is gaps get filled because of the exact same reason why you have bag holders, right? So you have after hours, you have different um, time frames where people can't get in, where people bought in high, sold low, whatever the case may be, right? Mm -hmm. So those people are trying to catch up mm -hmm. when it comes to like the same logic when you're filling a gap going straight up. There's mm -hmm. like if you look at the point of control. You can see where the levels are, where you have a majority of its supply and demand, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what point of control is. So you have a bunch of people that are sitting Arlo there said, that buy on the floor, perfect. laughing, bro. As you said that, I looked back at the chart history to see no gaps getting filled. No, he's right. He's talking about this gap, which is getting filled. There's one on, yeah. Right, the, right now, a gap is getting filled, and there's another one. Mm -hmm. There's one even lower. There's one right? even lower. But forget about that. Let's yeah. talk about this one. Yeah. Okay. And and we're feeling it. All right. I and, and uh, no, don't get me wrong. I'm not Almost 100. Said, oh, yeah, yeah, man, I'm not an ape. I'm not a diamond hand. I'm a money maker, right? Like Absolutely. I just care about profit. All okay. Said, so, right. but I, that's it. We want to yes, sir. Money. Yes, sir. I'm. I don't mind if it's up, down, whatever. I. You know. Yeah, I'd like to see hedge funds get screwed over. We all know that the market is manipulated that very clearly. Happen. Okay. The only thing right. who will get screwed is people like us, the retail traders. Right, right. Unless you play it smart. You play, like you said, the momentum, the trade. Now, only thing that I think is different and from this situation to AMC is the fact that they've switched up to not letting not as many people are all in Robin Hood, are in Weevil, are in these brokerages that they're actually showing us a number. Hey, you own this many shares, but then when it comes time to buy them, Robin Hood hosts those. Right. Like they take it to the clearing house. They do the transfer of the shares. Mm -hmm. They're dicking us over. They're giving their friend. It's inflated and it's bullshit. Well, now the difference between then and now is GameStop got smart, said, hey, CompuServe or CompuShare is one way to purchase direct um, direct registry share or something like that. I can't remember the exact acronym for it, but CompuShare, you guys can look it up. You actually own that share when you're buying stuff in Robinhood. You don't own that. Robinhood does. It's just in our, our little play account that we see, some screen that, you know, we think is connected. It is connected to our bank account, but it's just an interface. So Robinhood does hold all on. whatever they want to do. On, it, hold on. Go ahead, sir. With yes, sir. any brokerage that you are with, okay, like for me and you, we are not institutions. Okay, we can't buy shares directly. From Almost direct said offering. you got it right. It's DRS. Okay, even if it's DRS, we can buy shares directly. We have to have our shares held in a brokerage. Okay. Correct. So where do you think when I short, where do you think I get the shares mm -hmm. from? I get the shares from my brokerage. Whose Correct. shares it is? It's probably your shares that you have, right? That you bought Correct. and you see. Okay. It's yes. just like the government doesn't actually have like all the gold against which the money is printed. No government has that. 100%. Okay. Yes, sir. Same logic. Okay. If you ask your brokerage to pull out like all the shares from all the people that it's holding, it cannot because they lend the shares. Okay, they make money in all the ways. Okay, so for us, DRS really doesn't matter. Okay, because your share, my share is still with the brokerage. We are not like large institutions who can hold this. Okay, coming back to the original question, I loved your insight on why gaps get filled. Let me give you mine, why gaps get filled. Sure. Who trades in the market? Retail traders. Us, right? People. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what have we got? Memories. Correct? Okay. We yeah. have seen always that when there is a gap, it comes close, that gap gets filled. Correct? Right. It's yes. like what? It's like a muscle memory for us. If you have been in the market for a while, if you have read a few books, this is one of the very first thing that you learn. Gaps get filled. Correct. Yes. I'll pick up points from what you mentioned, supply and demand. Mm -hmm. This is sitting right on a support level right now. I have a huge gap. This is like from the top of a mountain, you are just pushing a small snowball to the downside now. If this thing just breaks slightly below here, okay, the first try is already done. If this thing breaks below this level, this 2765 level that we had, what's going to happen? People are going to simply panic. Okay, they're going to think like Correct. this whole gap gets filled. The market is going to get flooded with shares, supply. Naturally, if you have more supply, what's going to happen? This is going to straight keep on coming down. Okay, till this gets filled. When this gets filled, there are people like us who have heard once gaps get filled, basically, we start moving back again. So they will start buying a little bit around here. Okay, this creates demand. So your price shoots up. Six months down the line, if anyone is looking at this chart, the first thing they will notice, oh, this gap got filled. So next time there is a gap, the gap has to get filled. That's it. There is no absolute science to it. Does it give a different perspective? No, I hear you on the muscle memory, and it, it seems logistical. I just haven't seen a time where a gap hasn't got filled. So, it will, I mean... It always will. Because the price will always I, come down near it. When it does, it just pulls like a magnet. Okay, to the next correct. level. Correct. Yes. That's it. Correct. I agree. I, I agree with you. There so that's a, where I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking that. It, all right. So I guess I, let me reframe. So I still think that we have more downward pressure to go. Right. Absolutely. Like I, I know we still have. I, I, right here. I'm well aware of that. So I don't think we're shooting back up to 80 or anything like that. But I think now. So I haven't. All right. So so my logic behind it is, is I haven't heard enough people really talk about it. Yeah, it got pushed up. People started kind of talking. Reddit got woken up. Um, but still the average person in the store isn't talking about last year or you know four years ago whatever i had people in the store i had old ladies talking about it it was everywhere and this and that that's I when i was like oh for that okay because everyone around me was talking about this okay that's how i got into yeah. trading three years back okay okay you're absolutely correct uh -huh. okay this has multiple runs coming to it okay we'll see some downside. side We'll see it pushing up again, okay? Because see, if you just think of it like a sponge, what do you do with your sponge, okay? Your dishwashing sponge. You squeeze it, it gives water, right? After a while, yeah. you squeeze it again, a little bit more water, a little bit more money. Squeeze it again. Okay, keep on squeezing the retail traders. That's it. Okay, so everything right. is going to go up. Okay, our retail traders are going to get squeezed. If you want to make money, yes. what you do is you be just be on the right side of it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. And, and 100%, said, my guy. You guys almost said this. three years back, though, they were calling it a black swan event. I have no idea what that is, brother. Okay. Another thing that th pulls things like magnets is 200 EMA and VWAP if you're a daily trader. Okay. If you're a day trader. So that's the reason basically you'll always see on my chart VWAP and 200 EMA because those two things are same like gap fills. They just pull price like a magnet towards it. Can you repeat that? Okay. You said the, the VWAP and the 200. Amo like said it's what they call they unexpected change? events. Call it like, pull it on any chart. You will see like literally oh. VWAP and 200 EMA pulls like magnets. Okay. So that's there. I'll stay with you guys for another 10 minutes max. Okay. The gentleman who had question about the futures. Okay. We have got quite a good number of future traders here as well. I see you as well, Daily Grinder. Okay, hey, so you can ask your questions, yeah? Yes, I wanted, I wanted to ask you, you see how you guys just broke that, uh, the uh, gaps being filled uh, down, and now I understand it. Um, I was wondering, like, um, what's the logic behind someone lending you money to trade, and it's not your money? Like, I don't know, how are they profiting for it? It just, it, it's not, it's not clicking for them. All right. 
so when we are on fonted accounts okay what happens basically that first of all you go through a evaluation stage okay once you do the evaluation so what does it mean okay. when you're doing the evaluation if I ask you to give me 500 bucks to trade today will you give me yes or no? no with not without you proving it no absolutely. not without you proving you're not gonna lose my money absolutely I wouldn't give you even 50 bucks okay cuz I don't know you. <laughs> okay you have to prove to me and I worked hard to earn that 50 bucks now so what you do is first you go through a evaluation account whereby they set you a profit target as well as a loss target okay like if you go below the loss amount you're out okay you fail the evaluation if you cross the profit amount you pass the evaluation so to start a evaluation that's the first phase and that's a very very good way to test the waters learn because we typically buy these eval accounts when there is a sell going on right now like I trade with two firms apex and top step okay both have like tremendous offers going on you can get started around $17 for one and $19 with the others okay I'll share with you guys the links as well after we finish so you do that this basically covers the cost of your platform covers the cost of your data everything for a month okay it's not like you have just one month to pass the evaluation if you need more months you just pay the additional fees for the additional months okay like you pay like I think from the second month it's 33 bucks and on top step it's 19 always now that's there once you've passed the evaluation which a lot of people fail so that's the first place where they make money from your fees right let's say out of the 10 people who pay probably like four or five pass okay and often it takes multiple times to pass as well I failed three months before I passed the first one after that also I failed multiple ones all of us did okay so that's there so that's the way you make money number one number two when I make profits they typically take 10% and give me 90% so think of it I have already proved that I can trade correct and if I am making money okay they take 10% of it literally doing nothing okay just having a system out there for me and that probably they buy those systems in bulk their cost is way less than if I had bought it for myself okay so think of like if they have even a thousand traders working for them okay a thousand traders on average who make let's say let's take a very very reasonable number let's say on average these people make five hundred dollars a day into one thousand people you take 10% of that right not more they do make a lot of money out of us who's taking the mental stress of trading who's doing the trades me okay I'm putting in all my efforts these guys are literally sitting back okay if I'm making money so they're taking the 10% right there now think of it from another perspective they have all the data okay, literally whatever data you can think of they have all my data okay they take literally let's say the top three percent or the top five percent of the traders who are trading with them and what do they do they basically start replicating their the trades that these people take by themselves because they have the system my system is give coming from them okay all my data all my credentials everything they have so they can look like what trades I'm taking so those of you who are in data analytics and or big data you will know very easily right you filter them find the top 3% or 5% of your traders and you start replicating their trades it's a non-stop money-making machine make sense to you how they make money absolutely absolutely thanks okay listen the institutions never lose okay I have been working for very large banks for the last 20 years banks never lose money interest rate goes up we make money interest rate goes down we make money it's the same story everywhere what else questions you guys have about futures tell me we still got seven minutes anything that comes to your mind you said you said that uh, you have a eval period and an eval period 
uh, you have a certain limit that you have. Can you tell what's the limit um, on top step in it's order to? I mean, like it's pretty much the same on top step. I think like it's two thousand dollars is the loss limit, and three thousand dollars is the profit target. Like right now, while t talking to you guys, okay, this is like on top step X. I do have like an account. I have two PAs on top step X. I'm trying to pass two more. So this one has started, I think, like a few days back. Okay, just a few days back. And this is what exactly I'm doing with it. Okay, like if I hit this account at 53K, I pass the eval. That's it. Okay. And while talking to you guys, future straight 23 hours a day, trying to take some easy trades, made a little bit of money. $30 is not bad. While talking to you guys, if I can make that. And again, the importance of levels, right? Look here. My NQ chart is marked here, right? 18661. And look exactly where, basically, NQ bounced off and look exactly where I'm planning to short it from. That's it. Okay, so if you have the level um, set right, it makes it much easier. Futures uh, sound very interesting because uh, I think you mentioned something at the beginning of the uh, broadcast that I could relate to. Um, I, what I'm noticing with options trading, it's you're 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 still taking a um uh like an unnecessary risk, and there's no way to like you know zero it down because of the Greeks and everything like that. Like I've noticed that even if you enter at a point and it and it rises or comes back or goes down, like if it gets to that same exact point, you still don't break even. And that's, that's, that's exactly that I the realized reason. that I was like, you yep. know what? That doesn't make any sense. Absolutely. That's exactly the reason I started. See, what happened is like on my second year of trading, I figured it out like the way I trade penny stocks, that's not really sustainable in the long term, right? In the penny stock world, literally, I literally have to wait every day to see what's pumping and what's dumping. Okay. It's like flavor of the day. If you ask me, like, what is the full name of what I traded today, I cannot even say it most of the days because I don't care. All I do is, like, if the chart is telling me to go for long, I'll go for long, I'll go for short. I don't care about the news. I don't care about anything. What I wanted to do is something oh, no. which I can do in the long term. That's the reason I moved into, like, looking into spy options huge liquidity every single day try to get an understanding of like how to trade options and that's how I hooked up with alpha okay because he's a very good spy trader so my objective was to pick his brains to learn like how he sets his levels on spy okay and that's something I did for literally three months trying to like play options then I figured out like even if I'm profitable I'm losing Okay, I have to keep the Greeks in mind. I have to keep premium burn in mind. Theta Amo Delta said spy Delta. murders me every time I touch it, grinning face with sweat. Then don't touch it. Okay, so then I discovered futures, okay, which is literally like buying and selling at the price that I see, just like buying and selling a stock. What you see in the chart is what you pay. That's it. I would say give it a shot, guys. Okay, and we got some great stuff in the futures education to get you guys started. Okay, I have a few videos. James has a few videos. Look into those. And moreover, we are also expanding into Forex. Okay, James is very heavily into that. I just started, okay, with his encouragement. So we have different avenues. And especially if you're like a, have a day job, these are like good avenues to trade. Work in the evenings or early mornings and you're done with. Okay, so I'll post a link. Keeble 7467 said for options that's where indicators come in combined with patterns. Those are confirmation. And scaling is important. Very, very important. Scaling is the most important thing probably in trading that you need to learn. Okay. Like you'll see me like when I'm doing penny stock trades, I scale typically like even if I'm going into full position, I'm scaling like 25, 25, 50. Or if it's a risky trade, I'm taking out 50% first, then 25, 25. Because what happens is you lock profits, you're much more relaxed into the trade. Do you, do you have a um, specific uh, percentage that you, that you look at and say, you know what, I'm taking profit? Okay. Like 15%, 20%, like do you have a specific or not really? My logic when I trade is super simple. Okay. 
I set a number for myself that on any trade if I'm taking anything more than 5% profit I'm happy. Think of it this way. Say I make 5% consistently every single day. Okay, there are 22 trading days a month. Let's say I trade 20 days. I make 5%. On let's say my capital is $5,000 with which I go into trades. Okay, I make 5%. How much is 5% on 5,000 dollars? 250, correct? Multiply it by yeah. 20. How much is the amount? I don't know. So my capital is 5,000 and every month I'm making 5,000. I'm doubling up my capital. Will it make you happy? Amo said 5% compounding definitely a win. Absolutely. Okay, I don't go for this 200%, 300% wins. Okay, you will see my trades are like what? Anywhere between 5 to 15%. I don't target much. Because what happens is, by the time people start realizing... It's James Livingston said better than most banks can give you an interest a month man shrugging medium light skin tone. James, I work in a Chef bank. underscore Dre said $2,500. That's better than the, what the whole year gives. Okay, so the thing is, I go for the small wins. So what happens is before the market even starts reacting, you will see me most of the time I'm out of my trades with my 5 to 7%, 10% gains. That's that. I don't have a fixed number when I go into a trade. What I do is I look at the charts, look at a reasonable place to get out. That's it. I would have actually loved it if you asked me this question from a different perspective. That how do I set my stop loss? Order set Stop loss is set on a certain level? Absolutely no. Okay, my stop losses are never set on the amount or on a percentage. It's rather set on where the chart is telling you. Okay, beyond that level, if it breaks, I'll be out. Yep, of course it has to be a reasonable percentage or reasonable amount. I cannot risk like 25%. Okay, so that's there. So you don't take a trade when you have that level of risk. Make sense? Yes, All right, so that's that for me tonight. Okay, I'll do my homework for you guys. Post the links for the prop firms, okay, with the codes. Basically, try to get in now. It's only about $20. Give it a shot. Why not? The max you can lose is basically that $20 if you fail the eval. Nothing more than that. Okay, and James has another one which he worked with Alpha. That is for Forex trading. I would say that you guys should give that a shot as well. Okay, on that one you can Order try for trading for free for seven days. So all you'll be wasting your time, even if you don't like it, is those seven days of your time. That's it. But give it a shot, guys. Try to explore. Try to learn always. All right. So that's all for me. Thank you once again for. Kibble seventy four sixty seven said, "Don't blow your whole load." <laughs> also, if you have five hundred, don't put your whole five hundred inches. Thank you. Thanks. That's Leave some if you need advice. to average. Thanks, guys. Good night. It's James Livingston said, man, medium light skin tone, laptop, computer, forex room, come on down.